Testing. Okay. All right. Yay. Had a lot of trouble with the microphone yesterday with a lot of feedback, so we're in, we're in better shape. So, uh, good morning. Thanks uh, for coming to an early Sunday morning session here. Uh, my name's Daryl. Um, been here with the um, with the uh, special event station out in the hallway. And uh, so yesterday I talked about uh, some different um, open source software that runs on Linux for ham radio and uh, digital modes and briefly uh, talked about um, um, WinLink 2000. Uh, so I'm diving in a little bit deeper than on that topic uh, today, um, specifically for uh, using um, a Raspberry Pi uh, to do emergency communications um, out in the field um, if you're ever uh, deployed for um, for an emergency. So how many, how many people are familiar with WinLink 2000 system? Okay, well, okay, good. So, uh, okay, well, at, le well, at least one. Okay, so, um, and, and, I find that's also kind of about the same uh, at the, the, the radio club where I'm at up in Roanoke and um, gave a presentation a couple months ago and uh, kind of sparked some interest once people learned a little bit more about it. But it's, it's, a, it's an amateur radio uh, email system and, you know, the name WinLink, well, it's ma the software is mainly written for Windows, so sorry about that. But um, <laughs> but uh, it, the uh, the the Windows software is called WinLink Express. If you want to, if you if you uh, go to winlink.org and you can look up the the Windows software, the the WinLink Express, uh, to to uh, to download. And uh, if you uh, go into the setup, the, your your account name is your call sign. So like when you set up WinLink Express for the first time and you're connected to the internet, it will get you set up with an account um, with in the WinLink um, system. But uh, there's um, lots and lots of uh, packet nodes and HF nodes uh, around the world that you can connect with and send and receive email over the air. So, uh, a uh, amateur radio volunteer that has set up uh, a node on the system uh, creates what's called an RMS, a radio mail server, and it's so it's a dedicated computer with an internet connection and a, a radio and of course uh, uh, appropriate antenna. And it's just sitting there listening for connections from client systems to uh, to check check in, get their mail, and send mail. Um, so, you know, how is it used? I think I kind of, did I skip over a slide? Yeah, I, I quick, so there, and, and I'm not sure how recent that map was made, but that's, that's, uh, that's just the packet stations um, that are up and running. And if you go if you go to the winlink.org website under tools, they have they have like a list where you can see the current list of the stations that are up and listening, uh, both uh, two meter packet and on HF, and it'll list uh, what frequency and which uh, modulation method they're listening on. But uh, so, you know, for, for emergency communications then, it, it, it's been a very um, proven communication method at a disaster site when, when you don't have any internet, uh, you don't have any cell phone service, if you have a, a, a setup to get on HF with, uh, with WinLink, you can, um, you, can, you can connect to a node somewhere else geographically that does have internet uh, access. And, um, and the, the, one, the, the one little tiny caveat there is kind of like the cart before the horse kind of thing is, uh, well, how do you know what stations are listening and on one frequency if you're in a disaster area and you don't have internet connection? Um, in, in the... Um, 
And so in, I, would, I would say in the event that you are going to be deployed to a disaster area, I would like get a list and print it out and make a couple copies and take it with you where, where you're going to de deploy so you know what your uh, frequencies are that you want to try to connect to once you get to your, to your site um, where you're going to be providing communications. Um, but uh, with the Win with the WinLink Express software, there's actually uh, a way to to get the list of stations uh, of nodes over the air, and we experimented with that. And it's quite a long list, and it takes several minutes for it to download. But um, but you can actually get an updated list over the air. So they they've kind of thought of that situation and have kind of brought that into their into their software. Um, so how many people um, remember like uh, two meter packet radio and BBSs? Okay, so there's quite a few. So it's, it's, it's using the same packet protocol on two meters. And then um, on HF, it's using uh, a protocol called Winmore. Um, there's also um, a proprietary modem uh, called a Pactor. And they're they're quite expensive, um, and they're they're to me they're they're really geared more commercial use, but um, but I the cost of those pack, the Pactor modems I think a little bit prohibitive for amateur use, especially for volunteers. So that's why they developed the Winmore software, so that you can have a software um, TNC instead of a a packed or uh, hardware TNC. And there's a, there's a new protocol called RDOP, I, and I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. That's, um, that's how I see it. it. That's supposed to be an improvement, uh, more efficient and better protocol. Um, so uh, Winmore, I think, is eventually being uh, phased out f in favor of RDOP. But when you, when you go to the, to the website and look at the list of HF nodes, You'll you'll see in the listing which which if, are they listening on, are they using Winmore or are they using RDOP, and kind of match that up with the the modes that you can operate. And uh, so you know for emergency communication it is caught on it's 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 grown quite popular, especially compared to older traditional um, methods of passing messages by voice. Uh, email is less prone to error. So here's the traditional, the, the, the old-fashioned uh, ARRL radiogram. I can't honestly say that I've ever actually used that. We, in some of the clubs I belong to, we have done some practices where we actually pass traffic um, from, and for an exercise, but I've never actually passed um, emergency traffic uh, by voice. And uh, the traditional packet radio setup, you know, uh, a PC, the the right kind of serial cable f from a PC with a, ser a DB9 serial port to your TNC, and then the the proper cable to get from the TNC to your radio. Um, but hardware TNCs uh, are still around. You can still find them. You can go to Test there. Okay, very good. All right. Now I lost my train of thought. Oh, I was just comparing. Okay, the, the old traditional way to do packet radio. Um, and uh, oh yeah, I, I was talking about TNCs. You can still find TNCs like at Hamfest. Um, the um, 
the TNCs that use the DB9 serial ports are, are being replaced nowadays with what's called a TNC-X. And it's a, it's a TNC designed to use USB instead of the DB9 serial port. So, um, yeah, I mean, there may be, especially uh, amongst this group, there might be people with um, some, some older hardware that still have DB9 serial ports on them. And you can set one of those up for, to dedicate for a packet station. But the TNC-X is, is a newer, newer kind of TNC that uses serial ports. USB serial ports. So, so my main um, topic of discussion and, and not what I've brought that's up here in the front uh, for a demo is um, using a ras Raspberry Pi and uh, um, a hat. Uh, a hat for a Raspberry Pi is a board that plugs into the GPIO pins on the, on the Raspberry Pi. Um, a T, uh, it's called TNC Pi, so it's a TNC hat that actually plugs right onto the, the Raspberry Pi. And then um, I went ahead and got the, 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 the cable that plugs in to just write the standard Kenwood style microphone um, and uh, speaker plug on an on a HT. So in, in the example, in the demo here, I've got a, um, an HT that puts out 10 watts, um, which works fairly well if you're in fairly close proximity to uh, a TNC, uh, a packet node. Um, now I was, there, there is a packet node here in Charlotte, and I programmed in um, its frequency and call sign, and I tried to contact it while I was preparing. But I didn't expect that being inside in here that I was going to be able with 10 watts be able to get in contact with them. It, you know, I didn't want to bring in a 100 watt radio and you know and give everyone RF radiation exposure. So, <laughs> so we're keeping it to 10 watts or less for the demo here. Um, but the advantage of of this kind of outfit for for packet is is very portable. Um, with the, with the Raspberry Pi, you just need a five volt um, to power it. Um, what I have in my outfit is uh, I have a, a sealed lead acid battery, 12 volt battery with a buck converter that, can, that drops it down to five volts that I can plug in and I can run the Raspberry Pi for two or three days um, uh, if you're using it sparingly. And so I, I could be portable with a battery running the Raspberry Pi and uh, and operating and um, and and it's a lot less expensive than buying a, a full-blown laptop or a desktop pc and a, a hardware tnc so that's here's um the 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 company that uh that has that district that developed the software for the pi gate also has available the um the files, the 3D print a case. So here's a, a picture of a Raspberry Pi with the uh, TNC Pi in a nice little case and portable. You can take it around. Uh, Coastal Chipworks is the company that developed the hat for the the Pi, the TNC Pi, and I think they also they are also one of the companies that have the TNC X, the USB hardware TNC. Um, but um, that's kind of a little picture, and um, when I wrap up, everyone can kind of come up and look at the uh, the demo there and kind of see what it looks like. But that's doing that's doing all the uh, the packet work for you. So the 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 gentleman's ham radio operator that uh, developed the Pygate software. Um, was you know trying to brainstorm what's what would be a good way to to roll up everything that you need to to give uh, people at a um, at a uh, site access to send email out like health and welfare messages that people to send emails out. Um, so he's using the AX25 um, that's that's built into the Raspbian. Uh, Linux, 
He's uh, bundled in a web server and a webmail client. I think he's using Squirrel Mail. And uh, the whole, he's done all the work. Uh, he's, he's, he's configured everything. Um, all you have to do is just download the, uh, the, the, the image and flash it to your SD card for your Raspberry Pi. And so you've, you've got a Pi gate basically just for the cost of, you know, putting together the hardware, buying the, the Pi TNC. And um, I'm, I'm sure it would be nice to, and this is something that I need to do. I, I need to make a little contribution because I've been, I've been taking this out on the road and, and showing this. I should give a little back. But here, here's a, just a, a brief kind of flow of how it's working. Um, people at the shelter uh, with their smartphone or if they have a tablet or a laptop with them. And, and keeping in mind, you're probably in a disaster area, so there's not, there's not, probably not Wi-Fi and there's probably not um, cell phone coverage. So the, when you fire up the, uh, the PyGate software, it's actually creating an access point on the Raspberry Pi. And you, you, you give the people there on site what the, the password is to, to connect to the Wi-Fi on the PyGate. And then they just open up a web browser and, and go to, you give everyone the IP address they go to and um, give them like a username password for them to use. And then the, the rest of the diagram there, he's, he's kind of showing how, um, how the, the rest of it flows. Um, and I won't go on a lot of the details uh, that, because that could probably put people to, to sleep. But the, uh, the, the main thing there on the far right is all, when, when they send, then it goes out into a queue, and then the radio operator that's, that's running, operating the, the Pi gate then will uh, connect with, um, with, a, with a node on packet radio, uh, the TNC Pi going over VH, VHF, and then sending out the emails. So the, the trick there is to, to manage it is, the, is to be having a system set up that you're giving the people at the shelter a, the, you know, the Wi-Fi password, the IP address, and, then, and creating a username and password for them to, to log into the Pi gate so that they can, they can browse to the, to the Pi gate and compose an email. Um, and that's basically what I just said in the slide. I should have went to the next slide already. And so the outgoing email then sit, in, sit into a queue until the radio operator then uh, connects and sends out. And uh, it's, it's outbound only. Um, but once, once it goes out, uh, once the Pi gate connects to the, the packet node in, that's in the area that you can access, uh, those, those outgoing emails go into the WinLink system. Then from that from that node you've connected to, then it goes out to the and gets delivered to where the people are trying to get uh, get the emails to. And email replies uh, aren't aren't allowed. It's actually got like a little default message in the email saying "Do not reply" kind of thing. Because the the emails are going out under the the radio operator's call sign. So, so you're using your WinLink 2000 account to, to connect to WinLink 2000 and you're sending outgoing email on, on their behalf. So um, you wouldn't want people replying because then you'd be getting everyone's personal, the, their replies coming back to them. But the, the main service you're providing then is health and welfare messages that people can get messages out uh, to their loved ones to let them know where they're at and that they're okay. So uh, the PyGate system then, like I mentioned, you can, uh, you can 3D print your own case. Um, there's, some, there's some people out there that uh, have custom printed cases that you can get and you can even uh, find completely assembled kits all put together for you with a little built-in uh, touchscreen display uh, like a three and a half inch touchscreen touch screen display with a fan and the TNC Pi. Um, I think 
it, the, the completely assembled kit, uh, all made up for you, I think it, it's like $180 or something like that. So, um, but uh, the Pygate.net is, uh, is, the, is the gentleman's uh, website where he's got all the information. You can download the image to, to flash and, and build your own if you want. So in, in my demo here, what I've done is I've taken the official uh, Raspberry Pi 7-inch LCD display um, and uh, a Smarty Pi case, I think, runs about $28. The Raspberry Pi 7-inch LCD screen is $60. Um, but it gives me a nice little standalone Raspberry Pi with a, with a display so I don't have to haul around, uh, you know, an LCD monitor or anything. So everything's all self-contained. And I went ahead and got the, um, the, the cable with the DB9 connector on one end and the Kenwood-style plug on the other end to plug into an HT. And then um, the antenna that I'm using then is just a, a buddy pole uh, deluxe uh, set up as like a two-meter J-pole configuration, and it gets out pretty well. So that's really um, it for my uh, presentation. I, I, both of my presentations have been kind of short and sweet, but I'm leaving time for questions and people can kind of come up and look at the, uh, the stuff. I could maybe try a couple more times, see if I can actually make a, make a connection. But uh, anybody have any questions? Um, or I explained it so well that Everybody's going to run home and go build their own pie gate, right? <laughs> um, I, I, but after after seeing a little bit about uh, Windlink, I mean, anybody slightly interested in maybe find maybe learning a little bit more, doing some emergency communications. Um, like I said, it, uh, the local club that I belong to up in Roanoke, uh, it's it's certainly kind of spurred some interest. There's been about five six of uh, members of the club have have gotten an interest it's it's a it's kind of like a little it's you know how with amateur radio there's so many different things that you can try to do um so it's just it's just kind of another little slice of the hobby that, that you can maybe um learn more about and 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 maybe volunteer um with uh, your local aries organization and have you know um, a, a rig like this that you could uh, provide communications with so um, I'll be I'll be putting both of the yesterday and today's uh, slides up on my blog probably Monday or Tuesday after I get back home and I'm, I'm glad to answer any emails uh, anybody has any questions uh, interested in finding out more but um, yeah so I'm, I'm done early so I'll give you some time back some some time so you can check out and look at the the demo we can see maybe we can make a connection and uh thank you for uh for stopping by and listening